Hi guys, welcome back to DeFi Daily. Today we'll talk about USN, so the stablecoin that has been minted, that has been created on NIR, that is a blockchain that has its own EVM compatible layer that is called Aurora. We have been talking several times about USN. If you missed the previous one, you can check it into the corner section there where you can find also new information about the NIR ecosystem. Why we will talk about USN? Yesterday we have been talking about USDD. The main reason why we are talking about it is because what happened with USD changed the market. And right now there are so many people that are trying to understand if algorithmic stablecoin are still worth it or not. If what happened with USD can happen again into some other a stable coin like USN and USD. If you missed the video about USD, I will leave also the link in the right corner here so you can check it also that one. Just before to start guys, remember that this channel is about educational content and nothing has to be intended as financial advice. If you want to invest in anything, great, but do always your research first. And if you enjoy this content, remember guys to leave a big thumbs up, drop a comment, and if you're also new to the channel, remember to subscribe. Okay guys, let's start immediately. USN, so it is a stable coin. An algorithmic stablecoin, that means that uh, it is maintaining the peg through some kind of arbitrage. You can swap in any moment USN with NIR. NIR is uh, the uh, coin that is used to pay gas fees on the NIR blockchain. It is the native coin of the NIR protocol, the NIR blockchain. USN, it is uh, its own stablecoin. First of all, I want to start saying that there is a big difference between USD and USN. If with UST, the arbitrage with uh, Luna and the way that it has been used in order to mint new UST was burning Luna. In this case, we are not burning a, a near, but we are swapping them. And this is the interface that you can use if you are interested to mint new USN. It's like literally like a swap. You are interacting like with a smart contract where you are depositing near near coins and you're receiving in exchange USN tokens. For each dollar of NIR that you are depositing, you are receiving an equivalent amount of USN dollar. This is something that is important to remember because one of the reasons why the whole Luna Terra ecosystem has collapsed was because the system was minting new Luna in order to uh, cover the amount of USD that were converting. So they are going from USD to Luna because in the moment when the peg is not anymore at one dollar and in this case was below the dollar people were taking USD were converting them again into Luna in order to receive the equal amount for one dollar of Luna and in that moment they were going back they were selling the Luna to the market and selling the Luna to the market were bringing the price down not to mention that knowing this kind of system, people were front running the whole situation, shorting Luna and bringing the price of Luna even lower. That's the reason why the whole system has collapsed. USN is slightly different because instead of burning the token, you are simply depositing it into a contract. And this is important to remind because it means that the supply of NIR will never change. Even if for a certain moment, all the people will go from USN again to near. But how is it possible, sir, that they are able to maintain the peg? So in order to understand it, we have to check their white paper. I will leave also the link of it into the description below so you can check it by your own self. Just summarizing what they are saying. They are saying that there are different kind of stable coins that are available on the market. If you want to know more, I made also a video on the different stable coins that you can retrieve it into the uh, corner here. So you can check uh, the video by yourself. And uh, there are different types. So over collateralized, centralized, uh, fractional and algorithmic. What they are trying to do is uh, kind of mix. They want to take the advantage of different kinds of stable coins. Uh, you can also uh, find here how does USN compare to other stable coins. As you can see, they are trying to use different uh, features that are coming from different uh, models. And uh, the point is that right now they have uh, estimated that in order to back 
the amount of USN that they are planning to release into the next couple of weeks, months, and into the short term in any case, what is needed is 1 billion. So it means that they have a treasury, or at least that's what they're saying, of 1 billion of assets that is backing the USN that are in circulation. So we are not only having the amount of near that is the ones that you are depositing in the moment when you are swapping your USN, so you are giving to the contract near and you're receiving exchange USN, so we will have a treasury of near coins, but at the same time, this treasury will have also these stable coins or these assets that are used to maintain the peg. There is a big problem, this is something that um, I am more skeptical. I completely understand how the system is working. The uh, way that they are maintaining the peg is through this arbitrage because in the moment when it is going down, you have the uh, incentive to sell your SD and receive in here in order to uh, maintain the peg, or you can go to uh, the market uh, into, uh, for example, refinance, that is this platform here, and you can sell your USD, USN receiving USDT and so on. And everything is going quite smoothly, especially in the moment when the market capitalization of USN is quite small. And this is something that has any problem to be maintained as long as uh, it is uh, lower, for example, than 1 billion, that is the amount of cryptos of assets is uh, maintained to the treasury on top of the near reserves. But what will happen in the moment when USN will scale? What will happen in the moment when USN will go from just, uh, let's say, 1 billion or a couple of billions to, let's say, 30 billions? Because the main challenge to me is scalability. And what I'm missing, and feel free to share your opinions about it, is how this system will scale up. Because in order to scale and in order to keep backing this project with enough cash in order to defend the peg, it is needed a lot of money because the main problem in the moment when you are using this kind of system is that what will happen if for some kind of reason near will be attacked and the price of near instead of growing it is just dropping and dropping it's falling hardly because someone is trying to manipulate the price just to make USN failing, exactly what happened with UST. Because imagine a situation where we have, and in order to understand more about uh, how USN uh, works, you can use also this article that's quite interesting. I will leave also the link of it into the description below. And down here is written pretty clear how different kind of a system will come that will increase the adoption of USN. It will be some kind of looping system that will allow also to increase your exposure to USN and increasing the amount of yield that you are gonna uh, receive. At the same time, the main problem is that all of this will keep out from the circulation near, and the less circulating supply of near there is in the market, higher will be the price of near. And the risk is to create a certain kind of bubble. And when the bubble will explode, it is possible that we will see a jump into the price of near even by a lot and nothing bad about it because that's something that can happen and that's part of the market condition but the main problem is that this will bring the value of near into the treasury much lower than the amount of usn that has been issued and in that moment in order to cover this kind of loss into the treasury what is needed in order to prevent a possible bank run because after what happened with usd it's not really a matter if there is enough value behind because I, i'm not doubt that near could develop an ecosystem that has an intrinsic value that is able to back the stable coin the problem is after what happened with usd the uh, trust of the market um, for this kind of stable coins is much lower. So the trigger in order to start a bank run, uh, especially into the market conditions that are quite delicate as it is right now, it is much uh, easier. So in order to defend the stable coin, what is needed by USN and the central bank, that is also the uh, organization that is behind the USN, is uh, to have enough resources to defend the peg. 
so it is needed a lot of money and my question is from where the money will come if they will be able to retrieve enough resources to back usn usn can work because at the end of the story yes it is using an arbitrage system to incentivate and to keep the peg but at the same time is using as it is claiming here the different system from FRAX, from other collateralization, from USCC, so having resources in order to defend what it is really the value of the asset you have been issuing. Because in the moment when you are issuing, you are saying, okay, you can use this dollar that is USN, you are saying that in any moment you can exchange it for real uh, assets, for other assets that are representing that kind of stablecoin that you have just uh, spread into the market. In any case, if you ask me uh, my personal opinion, the system is much more reliable, at least that's uh, what is looking like uh, compared to what it was with uh, UST. In this moment, if it's true that they have 1 billion, the system is not at risk because uh, as long as the circulating supply of USN is smaller than the treasury, it is like having an over collateralized uh, stablecoin. So it's secure, uh, comparable to what we have seen with DAI, MIME, or other over collateralized uh, stable because it is fully collateralized. On the other side, the main challenge will come in the moment when this project will scale up. Obviously, maybe it's too early to uh, evaluate it because in this moment we are literally in an early stage. As you can see right now, the only features that are available are this swap into the central bank. Plus you can use a refinance, as you can see right now is offering the pool view with USN, USDT is offering something like a 5%. At the moment, this is the only pool that is available on refinance, probably other pools will be available into the next future. It is also available into money market here, but as you can see down here, the APY is so low. If you wanna have a recap about the state of art of USN, I will share also this thread by Alex Pavlov, that is a quite interesting thread that is offering down here also the state of art of uh, uh, the APY and how uh, into the next future it will be uh, working on uh, uh, the central bank because the main feature of the central bank will be offering some kind of fixed APY or at least a minimum APY because remember the rewards in the case of USN are not coming from uh, injection of capital into uh, the reserve but they are coming directly from staking rewards because in the moment when you are depositing near uh, coins near cryptos into the smart contract the central bank will use them in order to stake them and in this moment the staking rewards for near around 11 percent so it means that in the moment when they are receiving this 11 percent they can swap so they can uh, go from a uh, near to USN again and they can distribute this uh, uh, reward to all the people that are staking the uh, USN uh, token into the decentral uh, bank. If with any probability the amount of uh, APY will be higher uh, at least at the beginning because the amount of uh, uh, USN that will be in circulation will be higher than the amount of uh, um, near that are staked into the contract. In any case, that's interesting to see that uh, in this case, we are talking about an organic yield, not an artificial yield that is coming in this case directly from the uh, staking rewards. This feature is not yet available. It will come in, into the next future. And uh, also the same will bring uh, probably an increasing into the uh, APY on refinance, borrow cash, and uh, so on. So expect more opportunities into the next future to uh, stake, to use more use cases for USN in order to increase the amount of uh, yield that you can receive from it. In any case, guys, remember, we are still talking something that uh, specifically in this market condition is really delicate. The trust of the market for an uh, algorithmic stablecoin, it is at the minimum, and it will require some time to go again up. Don't be overexposed, even if the APY could be uh, great. At this point, it looks like, I'm not say safe, but at least safer 
than other solutions that are on the market. In any case, nothing compared to the traditional stablecoin, let's say the ones that are fully collateralized or over collateralized. In this case, we are still having some kind of algorithmic part that could be attacked. And especially in the moment when the project will try to scale up, that will be the more delicate phase. So guys, pay attention, be aware of the risk. Remember to read the paper before using anything. And let me know what you think about USN. Is it, in your opinion, better than UST? It looks like so. What is your opinion? And how do you think that this project will evolve? And how also the team will try to solve the problem of scalability that is obviously the main problem at this point. Guys, let me know what you think. Remember to uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Leave a comment and let me know what you think. And uh, remember also to leave a big thumbs up in order to help us to grow. Guys, thank you for following me and I will see you tomorrow with another video. Bye.